we, we had, this was a demonic attack. And the Lord brought clarity to me about what this demonic attack was. How many of you feel like there's been some weird stuff? Uh, don't just raise your hand just because you want me to feel better. But how many of you have gone through some weird stuff? Okay, so January 29th, I was, pro I was prophesying, and the Lord said that this was an assignment of Athaliah. And some of you may have seen some of this on Facebook. But Athaliah, you'll find the story in 2 Kings chapter 11. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read a lot of it, but I'm going to hit some, some points because I think we need to understand where we're at in the body of Christ. This is a war. This, let me say it again. This is a war. And the enemy hit us with what he hit us with, but I'm here to tell you Isaiah 54, 17 is true. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment we will condemn because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. We're walking it out, but I'm telling you, we've got victory. So who is Athaliah? Athaliah, she was Jezebel and Ahab's daughter. Yeah, this is not going to go well for her, right? Her son was king, Ahaziah. Ahaziah was killed in battle. So rather than letting Ahab, one of Ahaziah's children take the throne, which was the normal course of kings, she decided she would rise up and illegitimately seize the throne and when she illegitimately seized the throne, she executed almost all of her grandchildren. How many know that's very unnatural? I say almost all. She thought she got them all, but one escaped. Her name means affliction, constriction, and compression. Let me give you some definitions. Because I, I, feel like, I feel like that this is an assignment against prophets. You guys have a school of the prophets. It's against prophets. It's against leaders. It's against apostles. It's against reformers. It's against people that want to make a difference. Because who she was killing, let me just say this. This was the seed of David. This was David's lineage. Remember God said that the Messiah would come through the lineage of David? And she decided that she was going to wipe out David's lineage and cause God to break his covenant. Let me just say this. Our God is a covenant-keeping God. Our God keeps covenant generation to generation. Athaliah's name, affliction, it means to distress with mental or bodily pain. If you're in mental pain or bodily pain, stand to your feet. We're not standing to our feet to agree with it. We're standing to our feet to get rid of it. It means to, this, this word affliction means to trouble you greatly, to overthrow or defeat you, to impose a burden or to deliver a blow. Feel like you've been through any of that. The word constrict means to cause, to contract or shrink and stop the advancement of. If you feel like the enemy stood in the way of your advancement, trying to push you back, trying to get you to retreat, that's you. I want you to stand up. And compression is the picture of the python snake that wants to squeeze the life out of you, squeeze the joy out of you, squeeze the vision out of you, squeeze everything out of you, okay? Those of you that are seated, thank you for staying seated because if that's not you, I don't want you. But what I want you to do is stretch your hands out towards those that are standing. This is an assignment against God's people of covenant. It's against the prophetic word. It's against the prophetic promise. It's against what God said he would do. How many believe when God speaks a word, he'll move heaven and earth to bring it to pass? So right now, we are going to release a shout of the king. Okay? I could pray for you, but it's better for it to come out of you. Okay? Because you've got a curse-breaking yoke-destroying paracleto on the inside of you. And so we are going to take a deep breath, and we are going to shout to break this assignment off of your life, off of your family, and off of your generations. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout unto God!
Now I want you to lift your hands up and take a deep breath right now. Father, we just thank you, God, for filling us with the breath of God. God, filling us every place that's been compressed, every place that's been constricted. God, fill us up with your breath. Fill us up with your power. Fill us up with your joy. Fill us up with your victory, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, the curse is destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. You, you can be seated. And I'm going to finish this up. So the, so the fourth well, so the, the, the second well is any place the enemy comes to attack you, you got to take it seriously, okay? Number three, the third well is Rehoboth, which means there's room enough for all of us. So let me tell you what happened to Athaliah. Athaliah reigned for six years, and what she didn't realize is that a lady named uh, Jehosheba, Jehosheba actually sh- stole away um, Ahaziah's youngest son. Jehosheba means the God of covenant. This is all about covenant. This is about God keeping covenant with you. This is about God keeping covenant with this region. This is about God keeping covenant with a nation. Jehosheba took this child to her husband, who was the high priest, and his name was Jehoiada. And Jehoiada is really an example to us of reformers, reformers that are willing to fight, that are willing to stand their ground for what's right, that are willing to bring change. And what he did is he raised up a company of watchmen. I don't have time to read it all, but he raised up a company of priest watchmen who surrounded this child 24-7 in shifts. How many understand God's going to put us on shifts, guys? But he went beyond just that, and it says that he put weapons in all of their hands, but then it, it went beyond that, and when the child became seven years old, he set the crown on the child's head. Seven is the number of covenant. As a matter of fact, Jehoshaba. It means uh, that the oath of God, the covenant of God. And back in those days when you would make a covenant with somebody, it, it was called sevening yourself. I would seven myself to you. And that was a covenant as unto death, like a marriage vow is supposed to be. Have to add that part. It is. Sevening yourself. So when the child was seven, the covenant number, they set the, they set the crown on his head, and the watchmen were ready, and, then Je- and Jehoiada took all the weapons of David's treasury for the lineage of David, and he went out to the city, and he put weapons into the hands of all the people. Now understand this. It was no longer just about the priest. It was no longer just about the intercessor, who was Jehoshua. It was no longer just about the watchmen, but it was about the people. And it says all the people had weapons in their hands. Now, here's our challenge. We're at war. In America, when we go to war, for the most part in modern days, when we go to war, say Iraq, Afghanistan, our military goes to war. Our civilians, we pretty much just keep living life. Is that true? We get up, we go to work. I mean, we might know somebody, we might pray for somebody, we are aware, but pretty much our lives are not changed. But in Israel, even today, when you turn a certain age, whether you're a man or a woman, you go through military training. And you're given a weapon that you're trained to use And you take home. See, we've got to change our mentality. We've got to be like Israel, not like America. We can't, we got to get rid of a civilian mindset. See, what Jehoiada was saying is, he was saying, I want to make every single one of the people watchmen. 
Because in the church, here's what we do. Oh, yeah, the, the intercessors, they'll take care of that. Oh, the watchmen, they'll see that. The pastors, yeah, they'll take care of that. And we as believers can live as civilians in a time of war. And I think that God highlighted this story of Athaliah to say it's wartime and every one of us must know how to use our spiritual weapons. We can't just count on the pastors, can't just count on the intercessors, can't just count on the watchmen because guess what? There's some big bad devils and where every single one of us are going to have to be skilled. So he says he put weapons in the hands of all the people. Athaliah heard of this. She came running in to the temple, screaming, treason, treason. Isn't it just like the devil to blame the righteous for what they're doing? And they took her out through the horse gate, and they killed her. The horse gate was the gate of war horses. It was a gate that reminded us we're warriors. And it was right next to the water gate, which was the springs of water that fed the city. Rehoboth means we've all got a job to do. The fourth well was Beersheba, the well of covenant. Spring up, O oh well. Spring up, O oh well. Spring up, O oh well, in this region. Spring up, O oh well, New Jersey. Spring up, O oh well. New York, spring up a well, Pennsylvania. My geography's bad. What other states? Spring up a well, Connecticut. Spring up a well, Rhode Island. Spring up a well, Massachusetts. You know what? That bottleneck, when this breaks here, the whole top of the the whole top of New England states are gonna be, get a deluge. <laughs> 